Hello everyone, it's Eddie the Chump coming back with another video and today is a bit of a tutorial about how to, um, if you play PC games and you want to record them for YouTube and things like that I'm going to teach you how to do that today with OBS now obviously you get this weird distortion because I'm recording my desktop with OBS as we speak, it's actually what I've used to record this tutorial with so I'm going to just go through quickly the steps that you need to take okay so the first thing that you need to do is you need to come up here to settings okay and then you just go into settings um, in here where it says setting profile what you need to do is call it something like PC offline record okay and then you go add and then come down to encoding now there are, there are various different ways of doing this but I use CBR because it's easier it's easier for your processor so for those of you that don't know, uh, a Hopog PVR, its max bitrate that it records at is 12 megabytes per second. Now, if you have a fast computer, you can go higher with OBS, there's no limit. But um, this is what I would recommend, it gives you perfect results, so um, I would go with that. I would go 1200, um, and for the codec is AAC bitrate 128, that's fine. Um, also, make sure that this cuts, use custom buffer size is ticked off, okay, so you know that you're actually doing it. Um, so the custom buffer size is for when you're streaming, and OBS is a streaming program, but you can just record locally, and that's very useful for someone like yourself who's watching this to learn how to record their PC games. In broadcast settings, right, what you want to do is you want to select this from live stream to file output only, and then obviously choose somewhere where you want to save it. So I'm just going to select my desktop. Oh yeah, you've got, this is a weird thing about OBS, you have to name the file name. So whatever game you're going to play, I'll say Blacklight. There you go. And in here, it should, you get two options, Flash Video or MP4. Select MP4, you'll be able to, any console YouTuber will tell you that they, you know, especially if they're using an Elgato or a Hophog, will use an MP4. So that's what you, typically you would want to record in. So click Save. And if you want to put in hotkeys to start recording, obviously it says start stream, but for you, because this is file output only, it's it's setting your actual record button. Um, in video, yeah. In video, right, okay, video adapter, you don't want to change that, that's the graphics card on your PC. Um, and your base resolution is what you want. Uh, generally, it's the size of your monitor. So this monitor is 1600. 16 by 900. So, for the, if you want to record in higher and you have a high resolution monitor, that's fine. But you, this needs to be basically, you can even set it to monitor if you want. But that's not what I would do. I would set it to 1600 by 1900 because if you make it 16 by 9, that makes the downscaling for different resolutions easier for you. And that might sound a bit convoluted, but it will be clear in in time. Um, in resolution downscale, I would generally, if you you can record higher, but the higher you are, the less quality you're going to get because of that bit rate. And if if your PC can handle it, by all means, put that bit rate up to compensate for that. But I always set it to twelve eighty by seven twenty, and the reason for that is is because YouTube, whatever video format you give it, even if you have fr higher frames per second, that your PC can run Battlefield on top settings at like. A ridiculous FPS. What it'll do, whatever whatever frames per second video you put to YouTube, it will always, always convert it to 30 frames. Always. Without fail. So, I mean, 720p is good enough for a lot of people. If it isn't, you're going to have to have it set here and then set here as well to not downscale. So I could have it at that, but I downscale it to 720 because that's 720p. And in here I put 30 frames per second specifically for YouTube. So that's the reason why I've done that. Um, those, those settings are pretty self-explanatory. Um, audio. Right. Desktop audio device is whatever your operating system's default sound card is. So I'd just leave it on default. That means that if you have Twitter in the background or you have TweetDeck or you have music it will come through unless you turn that background sound off when i show you my obs i've i'll show you that i've actually turned the background 
background mix off. Um, you need to be careful of that, but it's quite easy. Um, microphone auxiliary device. So I'm recording this through OBS and you're hearing my voice because I've selected my Astro headset microphone. That's all fine. Um, this stuff, don't really worry about it. Just, just leave it. I mean, there are some... This is more for streaming. This is for how what sort of load you want to put on your processor that sort of stuff so just just leave it at the moment multi-threading is if you've got a, like a multi-core processor and stuff like that so that's fine if you have audio problems you might want to uh, mess around with this audio gate that means that effectively what it does is it puts a gate on your voice or the audio recording device so what that actually means if you're familiar with if any of you are with music production a noise gate is you set a threshold um, and these close and open thresholds mean that if a sound is below your threshold in decibels, it will cut it. It just won't acknowledge that there's an input. And if it exceeds your input, it will just cut it. So this is this is a way of noise cancelling essentially. So if if you ever if you ever shout too loudly through your microphone, if you've got the gate uh, gain set too high on it, it will cap it. So it won't ever go above a certain decibel. Now that can be useful, but if you're using, say, like a, you know, this is this only really applies to live commentary. So, if you if you have like a Yeti or you have some other microphone, it might be useful messing around with this to get the right kind of level levels. But other than that, it's I mean, it's not really that useful for most people. And then just click OK. Right. In the scenes and sources, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to create a new scene. Now I, I think I can add a new scene here without it going crazy. So let's just say test. Oh well, it has. Let's let's just go back. There we go. Right. <laughs> okay. Now this is where you set what you're going to capture. And um, basically, if if you know how to use OBS at all, there's a game capture here. Now the game needs to be running while you're doing this. Um, and I've I've found that when you're in a game in the video settings. It's best to set your video game's resolution to a 16 by 9 format. That means that it will fit full screen instead of not fitting full screen, and won't there won't be any sort of uh, sort of frame conversion loss of quality. So, say if you're in, you know, I play Blacklight a lot. I set my resolution to 1600 by 900. That's why I did it because it's a 169 format. It makes it easy to, for recording to your hard drive for YouTube. So that's where I would do it. Obviously, you can do this. I mean, you can do this if you wanted to do it for, say, you know, if you have a Black Magic card like I do. If you want to do it for console games, this is where I would do it. Or if you use an Ava Media, and your PC monitor goes out of the graphics card into the Ava Media and back out to your monitor again, that's where you can do it. You can actually set it here, but you wouldn't be using the software if you had that because you'd be using the Ava Media software. So this is for people who don't have stuff like that. So this is where you set what you want to record, and that's generally in game capture. And you can see that um, on mine it says stop streaming. That's actually because I'm recording. And if you can see this level here, this level here is... Um, your desktop sounds, so your system sounds, whereas this is obviously my voice talking to you. Um, and I've actually got this muted for this tutorial because I didn't want any background sounds coming coming through. However, when you record a game, you will need this unmuted because that will be your game audio and you'll need to mess around with the levels here to get... If, if you're doing live commentaries, you need to get the balance between your mic and the game right because some people find that irritating or if you're just recording for for offline so you can then cut, edit it and you know make videos or make a montage you want to click the mic off I think when you're playing a game that doesn't actually mute your microphone it just mutes OBS's ability to receive that audio information so um, it, you'll still be able to talk to your friends and everything like that so you've got to be careful with these two things um, that about wraps it up also it will say down here, and this green patch means that it's actually recording. Um, it will also say your frames per second. Now, OBS is primarily a streaming software, so if you wanted a stream, or if people want a streaming tutorial for using OBS for PC games, I can also do that, but this is for offline recording. The one thing that I found is that I tried using Fraps, and what Fraps does is basically the same thing, but it absolutely decks your processor. You will drop in frames massively 
because um, it's using OpenGL or DirectX um, technology to record the video. Now this technically does the same thing but it's much 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 more efficient. I, it's got to the point now where I can't notice any noticeable drop in frames while playing Blacklight and recording with these settings to a file. Um, obviously when you're, when you're done recording or if you've set those hotkeys up you can just stop streaming once you've finished the, your gaming session or whatever and what it will do is it will come up with this window saying compiling mp4 and that means that it's basically it's putting an end to the file you've created so operating systems can access it and that's about it that's all you really need to know um, for for OBS really so I hope you enjoyed that I hope you find it useful I found this a much a much more useful way of recording my PC gameplay for YouTube than any other okay well um, if you do like this tutorial please like the video and um, please go to my channel and subscribe there will be other tutorials that I, I'm gonna do one for streaming PC games because that's a question that people get all the time it's also something that I was really confused about when I first started playing PC games those of you who are on my channel now I'm a console gamer but this is for people who want to capture their PC gameplay okay I'll see you soon and